what is is uh, arcadian minerals all about well we're a battery metals uh, explorer uh, and uh, um, just taking a while to click through on this we are situated in uh, in namibia uh, we have a number of projects four of them uh, two projects are situated in the southern part of the country where we have a palladium and nickel project uh, uh, within uh, two mafic intrusions uh, with some significant mineralization. Then we have a tantalum project, which is an advanced uh, project. We are currently conducting a feasibility over that project, the tantalum project. And then in the middle of the country, we have a lithium project, <coughs> a lithium in clay and lithium in brines project, where we already have a, resources, a resource over the, the, the clays. And then in the northern part of the country, we have a copper gold project uh, that's close to existing mines uh, and other prospects in in Namibia uh, and uh, that also has some significant mineralization so clearly we're a battery metals company focusing on that uh, just briefly on on where the projects are here you can see a image showing an inverse uh, pyramid the uh, production side of things would be where where the ultimate value is then reached and uh, so as we progress these projects up the up the value curve uh, one would then hopefully get all of them closer to construction and production uh, the palladium and nickel project and the uh, Carib uh, copper gold project are at concept stage haven't been drilled yet uh, and so also the brines one for the lithium and then we have resources already at uh, the bitter Wasser clays as i've mentioned we are progressing that as well and then at Swanson, we are busy with the feasibility study. And so we will hopefully be uh, upgrading our projects as we go along. <clears throat> Quickly about the, the, the company share price, you can see uh, we, we, if, for you that's in this industry, would know that it's uh, it's been a sorry tale for the last five, six weeks. Uh, but I'm glad to say that we're keeping up. Uh, we listed last year at 20 cents uh, and uh, at high of 32 cents uh, and our, our uh, uh, around the territory of 20 cents once again uh, and we believe that this thing will pass and that uh, uh, battery metals in the long run will be there for quite a while for decades uh, just quickly on the on the uh, management uh, I'm an explorer but also a lawyer I've uh, formed four companies that have got uh, uh, significant pro projects are listed. Uh, there are already uh, uh, two mines, three mines um, in existence resulting from those companies that I've uh, founded with other people and myself. Uh, and uh, um, I hope to do the same here with, uh, with Arcadia, particularly starting off with the, the Swanson project. And the team that's involved are all hands-on uh, people that's been involved with similar discoveries in the past. Uh, <clears throat> So as far as the Swanson Tantalum project goes, I want to highlight a few things to you. Uh, the red dots are uh, pegmatites we've identified uh, that's mineralized from sampling uh, to some extent, but which hasn't been drilled. Um, the blue section there are the pegmatites that we have uh, explored for, have found them to be mineralized consistently. Uh, and uh, that was the subject of the Swanson mine. And the, uh, the lighter area there, that's where the Swanson mining license lies. We've uh, received that about two weeks ago. And what, what we want to convey with this uh, is that uh, we have a significant exploration potential. Uh, we focused only over that area there, uh, which is in blue. Uh, and already have, after three years exploration are in the process of doing a feasibility study there. Uh, so the numbers that I will be mentioning to you must be taken into this context. Also, the green area there is a existing mining operation that has been, or a mining license that belongs to another company, an AIM listed company that has been in production uh, for for many decades, and uh, it just shows you that this area is a fertile area for 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 tantalum. So, uh, and a zoom in on that light blue area. This is a section through that light blue area. This just shows you the potential. Uh, that we have for further exploration, but also shows you the resources that we have. Uh, you will see the blue lines denotes the, the drilling that we've done. Uh, and you will see in this area here that that's what we will be open cast mining, uh, that area there as well. And that's where the most of the resource lies presently. 
clearly there's other other potential here but what we are doing is we're trying to get into production as soon as possible and produce cash flow uh, and i'll give you the timelines on that a bit later but the intention here is to is to develop a mine that would be a cash generator for the company the uh, metallurgy uh, uh, let's start with the with the mineral resource we have about 2.6 million tons at 486 ppm you'll see what that means what is the 40 at 486 ppm means in the next slide uh, but in, in essence it's a significant uh, resource uh, we will be doing open cast mining and uh, we are, will be producing a conflict free uh, uh, um, product which would make it more attractive from a, a marketing point of view uh, conflict free meaning that it's not produced in areas where there are forced labor or child labor. <clears throat> then um, metallurgy and processing, what we have is a uh, uh, very simple, straightforward gravity processing uh, where we use spirals and multi-gravity separators. And we've already done bulk sampling test work, of, uh, 60 tons of it over commercial scale equipment, which tells us that this thing can work from an economic point of view using uh, equipment that already exists, which obviously will then be used in the plant. Uh, we uh, will then produce a 25% tantalum pentoxide concentrate, uh, and we expect the cost to be low, but the feasibility will indicate what the cost would be, and especially what our capex would be. So here's the slide that relates to uh, the grade, um, and there you can see the, the Swanson project here at, uh, at its, its new grade of 486 ppm which is basically 480 grams per ton uh, and then you see on this graph you also see other projects uh, some of them quite famous uh, and this this axis denotes the tons so uh, you'll see that that the Swanson project denotes quite well or s settles quite well into into the uh, uh, world global resource uh, uh, spectrum but what's important is that the grade seems to be uh, elevated higher above our competitors and that of course then bids well for production capacity and then for for profit um, i'm not going to dwell too much on this timeline but what we do expect is that production if everything goes well that will be in production by end of next year or beginning of that following year uh, our, our next project is the bitter bastard lithium project which we're very excited about I have to start off by uh, first um, educating those that, that need to, to understand this a bit better, otherwise it will not be fully understood. And that's by first listing uh, what the USGS, that's the US Geological Survey, denote as requirements for lithium brine deposits and lithium clay deposits uh, in the environment that we find ourselves in. And first, one needs an old deep and closed basin with aquifers. Uh, then you need lithium clay deposits, uh, i.e. clays that contain lithium. Uh, then one needs the, uh, the right basement rocks uh, with some geothermal activity. And, and then one also needs an arid climate, which is in the uh, what's called the lithium latitude, uh, where you get the precipitation being less than the evaporation so that you have a concentration of the total dissolved solids in the, in the basin. Uh, and then uh, you need uh, other uh, elements, potassium and, and boron in particular. And then, of course, if everything goes well, then you have lithium in there as well. We've ticked off all of those items there, except we've never tested for brine uh, lithium. It hasn't been tested historically as well. So that bodes, bodes well for, for a possibility of a, a new lithium uh, um, deposit or uh, rather province in, in, in Africa. Uh, this just quickly shows you uh, the basin environment. It confirms that's the work that we had done to confirm the basin environment. You can see here the radiometric interpretation shows you the thorium and, uh, and uranium and uh, potassium content that one would expect in a basin of this kind. That's where it is. And then uh, uh, also the total dissolved solids. Um, this thing jumped a bit too far. So here in context is the uh, the Bitter Russet Basin in context of other known world deposits. The, the, the green outline area area is the Salar de Atacama in, uh, in, in uh, South America. And then there's a famous deposit in, um, in America called Clayton Valley where Albemarle 
uh, has got a mine. Album Mall is a $26 million, a billion dollar company. That's denoted by that light blue area there. Uh, and then Album Mall's license is, in that, is denoted on scale uh, in, in that darker blue area. So the license area is very big. What we're telling you with this is that the license area is very big. Uh, and uh, it's also got the same characteristics as you would expect at Clayton Valley. So what we uh, want to do next is to, is to explore more for, for the lithium in the in the in the brines and then get to uh, a stage where we possibly make a new discovery on that however we already have a a, a resource uh, with respect to the the uh, clays there we have uh, 15 million tons uh, uh, and we've drilled it uh, in january and february we're still waiting for the results on the on the on the resource uh, from from our uh, experts uh, and and hope to to come up this, with some good numbers there uh, it's uh, the the mineralogical content is very similar to what you find in the in Clayton Valley and then there's also a possibility of upgrading that resource by making a concentrate um, then uh, just quickly on on the rest I see that I have only about three minutes left um, on the other projects, the copper gold, uh, the Karabib copper gold project, uh, it's situated in the same geological environment than the Navahab gold mine, which is a SCON hosted 8 million ounce uh, uh, gold deposit. Uh, it's about five kilometers away from there. And then it's also about uh, 10 kilometers away from the Osino uh, uh, Twin Hills deposit. The, the, what I want to highlight for you here are the, are the mineralization that we took from scones, which is similar to Navajap, and then and then veins. Uh, and you can see that the that the, for the the amount of, of grab samples taken on surface this is not drilling. This is just sampling, uh, but it shows you that the area is mineralized, and we have about a 20 25 kilometer structural feature that's about two kilometers wide that we are exploring currently as we are the, as we are speaking. The guys are in the field presently. Uh, that's also partly why Philip Leroux cannot be here. He's the CEO and he ran into trouble with respect to Wi-Fi connection. Then uh, with respect to uh, the other project in the south, which is the Kunkel -Nick Nickel Palladium project, there we similarly have two ma major in intrusives, MAFIC intrusives, that is, are, are multi-layered, similar to what the Bushfell complex is in South Africa, uh, or the Great Dyke in Zimbabwe, which are both uh, very highly mineralized domains. And, and the uh, historical analysis of results you'll see here, uh, that's from drilling that was done by Rio Tinto in 1972, that uh, shows uh, elevated values of mineralization uh, and also the right uh, uh, mineralized rocks uh, and, and uh, um, uh, minerals, uh, the pyrotite and pentladite and calcopyrite. So, so yes, that's, uh, Eva, sorry, I took a bit longer, but this is, that's the, uh, that's the gist of it. So thanks a lot. Um, we received uh, several questions. We cannot answer all of them. Um, but uh, let's start with the first one. Uh, which raw materials are important for energy turnaround that the world uh, is striving for? And which of these raw materials has Arcadia focused on and why? OK, uh, I think. Uh, what what we see in the world is that um, obviously there's a need for a change in in direction with respect to what energy we use. Uh, electrification is the future. That's where the changes will come. And what we need is is, is lithium, uh, vanadium, uh, cobalt, uh, copper, graphite, uh, palladium, platinum, and then and then nickel uh, as probably the topmost uh, uh, elements and. Um, the, the, the ones that we fulfill are, are lithium, as you heard, uh, and then also copper, uh, and then palladium and platinum, which plays a significant role in, in hydrogen energy, uh, and, then, and then nickel, of course. So uh, we, I think we're pretty much uh, covering a lot of these items. We are, a, we are a battery metals company, and therefore intend also to keep on looking for very similar uh, metals that we don't yet have, and then expand what we already have. Thanks a lot. Uh, the next question is, Arcadia Minerals has received an official mining license and the necessary environmental certificate from the relevant authorities for its Swanson Tantalum project in Namibia. 
please briefly outline the Swanson Talon project. What is the timeline for the next three to five years? Okay, so uh, as mentioned in the presentation, um, the the Pantantlin project has got a significant resource. Uh, we expect it to, to add significant years life of mine. That's, that's economical. Uh, and it also uses very simple technology to process, meaning or indicating that the, the capex should be fairly low. Uh, and then it's got high grade which then indicates that the OPEX will be low. Uh, and uh, that will then, uh, hopefully, after in September, we'll know whether the project stacks up economically. Um, my gut feel is that it does. Uh, and uh, then the, the life of mine would be extended. Um, it's, I expect it to be much more than three to five years. Uh, but on on even greater resources, as that slide initially, which I showed initially with the other red pegmatites denoted on that, uh, it shows that there are a lot of exploration potential. So maybe we would even increase production uh, and then also uh, um, have much, much longer life of mine out of that project there. That's what we foresee happening, but it's still early days. Thanks a lot. Uh, and the last question is, uh, Arcadia Minerals is focusing on lithium, among other things, with its Bitterwasser project. How do you think the demand for lithium will develop in the coming years due to the boom in electric cars, among other things? Well, the demand, I know there's been some talk from well-known uh, banks or corporate advisors saying that um, that lithium uh, is probably going to, to, to become less uh, pricey and that the demand for it would deteriorate. It's not what we're seeing in the market presently. Um, at this stage, the, the, the projections continue to stay. Uh, the producers of electric vehicles are screaming still for, for lithium. And I think there is a lot of room for uh, players to come up uh, and get to the place where they would be supplying that market. Uh, you know, uh, one of the other things, although um, we have a, a, a Tantalum project, Tantalum plays a significant role in electrification of vehicles because electrified vehicles require three times more, sometimes four times more uh, uh, semiconductors or chips to, to run those systems. Uh, and, and the same, I think that indication indicates the, the also what's happening now with, with, uh, with lithium. It also indicates a significant growth in 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 all the battery metals, uh, not only uh, not only lithium.